as soon as I get in my 911 and head down the road and get to the hangar and continue that air cool experience by getting in my plane and going flying, that feeling and those sensations cannot be matched. When I was a kid, I was always uh, fascinated by how things worked. Uh, anything mechanical, anything that moved, I was always curious about, you know, what inside of it was making it tick. I think a lot of that came from my father. Um, watching him take things apart, you know, fix them rather than replace them when we're growing up really kind of helped spark that drive to figure out things that are mechanical and, and work with my hands and, and do something there. And I think the greatest feat to me when I was a kid was, you know, looking up the sky and watching planes just fly around. There was no way that we can, you know, put a bunch of parts together and have someone go flying with them. So behind me is uh, one of the aircraft I learned how to fly on. It's a 1973 Cessna 150L. It's a pretty neat aircraft. It's a, it's a really popular training aircraft and this one has lived uh, a couple of lifetimes <laughs> before we got it. It's a funny aircraft in the way that you have to like really coax it up to altitude. Like you have to really play with it and get every ounce of performance out of it. And that's what kind of makes it interesting. The Cessna 150L is powered by a 200 cubic inch. That's about a 3.2 liter four cylinder air cooled engine, which is similar to the 911 we have here. This is a 79 911 Targa, and it's powered by a six cylinder air cooled engine in the same flat configuration. And there's a lot of similarities between the two. Besides just the air cooled nature of them both, they both have a really direct mechanical feeling. In the aircraft, it means there's no hydraulics, there's nothing like that. It's all cables and pulleys. And similarly in the 911, there's no power steering, no power brakes, there's nothing. It's just you and the controls, you know, a direct shaft exactly to what's happening. I got the 911 about three years ago. It was funny, it actually completely fell into my lap. Originally it was a barn find, and a true barn find. It was hidden in someone's barn, you know, out in the country. So we went and dug it up and uh, discovered that it needed quite a bit of work to get running right. So we got it running right and then noticed that basically the rest of the car was a little... It just needed some love. We decided to kind of do a mini restoration on it. Took the whole car down, so we did fresh paint. Uh, we installed these uh, wide body fenders to make it look like a 930. Even though this is a, a 911 SC, it kind of shares the look of a 930. The wheels are uh, Augment Wheel Company out in uh, Oakville, Ontario. So it's pretty cool. It's a local company and we got to work with them and make these really neat wheels that are inspired by the original Fouche wheels that came on the car, but they have what's known as a, like a cut Fouche style. So it looks like a racing wheel. Definitely isn't, but has the cool look and fills out the flares really nicely. And uh, other things we've done, the whale tail, just to give it something extra because we felt like it kind of finished off the back of the car and gave it a little bit of a kick. Kind of looks like a wing when you fly things or drive cars are like this are very direct. It's up to you. It's kind of like in your hands. So there's kind of a interesting charm and character in that because it's it really allows you to connect with the machine in a way where you feel like it's an extension of you versus you know something that you're just controlling. I guess the most enjoyable thing about these two machines for me is the way that they kind of tickle your senses. You know, it's not just the way that they perform, but it's more so the way that they get there. As soon as you roll up to either of them, it's the smell of, you know, the oil, the gas. You get in, it's all of the mechanical clicks and like touches that, you know, when you slam the door, it's a mechanical thud. You get in, you get driving it, and the way the engine starts up, it roars to life, has a lot of like character and charm. It's not insulated or isolated in any way. Like, truly feel what's going on and when you get going it's you know it's not it's not just about speed it's about the sensation of getting there when you're driving a 911 you can feel every single bump every single like curvature of the road and it's all communicated through the wheel straight to your hands and the same thing when you're flying a, a small Cessna like this you can feel it, all the air the mechanical turbulence like you can feel it through the aircraft so it almost allows you to escape and really feel what's going on around you As a commercial airline pilot, I find myself doing one of the best jobs in the world. I get to fly some really amazing equipment and go to really awesome places. I get to fly fast and high and for a lot of people, that's their highest level of achievement and that's what fulfills them. But I think the reason I keep on coming back to this air-cooled experience is for something else. It's a completely different connection. You know, in a fast jet, you get all these really amazing aids that help you but they kind of take away from that direct experience versus here, it's directly in your hands. If you wanna go see something, it's up to you. I think that's a really amazing freedom that you get by having this experience versus 
the commercial experience.